And thank you for continuing to watch BubonicCon 52. Up next is a panel discussion, State of the Art, the annual artist chat. I will now hand this over to your moderator for today, Chaz Kemp. Hi, guys. My name is Chaz, Chaz Kemp, and I am the moderator for the State of the Art panel for BubonicCon 2021. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I would like to start with everyone just kind of introducing themselves, uh, starting with Jean. Ah, thank you. Uh, my name is Jean Stein, and I'm an author. Um, and right now I'm living in Arizona, which is like 120 degrees outside. So I know I, I, I miss Colorado. <laughs> I miss Colorado a lot. But um, yes, that's that's me. Awesome. Uh, Beth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Leggett. Um, I'm a uh, novel cover artist and gallery artist. Awesome. Awesome. Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff Benham. Um, I'm an artist who works in a lot of different mediums, uh, including live theater and and uh, comics, and I'm also educational coordinator for 7000 BC, which is a, a nonprofit comics collective. Awesome, Reese. Um, hello, I'm Reese Hogan. I'm coming here from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, and I write um, primarily science fiction. My last novel came out two years ago from Angry Robot called Shrouded Loyalties. It's a military sci-fi diesel punk. Right on. Um, John. I am John Sanchez. I am a illustrator, um, a screen printer, a movie poster, and gig poster artist. Very cool. All right. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm Chaz Kemp. Uh, I am an illustrator. I do a lot of fantasy, sci-fi, steampunk, cyberpunk. I do book covers, magazine covers. Um, and, uh, and yeah and just an overall guy that likes to do lots of panels at conventions. So um, one thing to note, um, I will be the artist guest of honor at Bubonicon next year. Uh -huh. So, but the difference will be, I, it will be in person oh, this time. Awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> we all get to see each other again. <laughs> so that'd be great. Um, okay, enough about me. Um, what do you think of me? No, just kidding. Um, so. Uh, the first question for the artist chat, and this is going to be pretty loose, uh, pretty informal. So, um, so the question I have for you guys first off is how did you guys stay motivated during the pandemic? <laughs> Do you Whoever want to wants to start? Jump in. Um, it was really, for me personally, it was very hard to stay motivated. And I had a book um, that that was due in August, which we got done. So that was good. Um, and I had a short story for Hex Publishers, um, an anthology. And that was really the only thing that, that kept me motiv motivated because I kept thinking I have all this time and I should be able to write 12 novels. And um, it just didn't work out that way. I, I would love to say that I had trouble, but I didn't because I've got the biggest con, uh, contract that I've had in a very long time. Oh. Um, and I had a number of uh, Melinda Snodgrass's series and the her agent and uh, publisher came to me and went, hey, since you've got all this time. Um, so mostly I was doing rent work. So... <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was uh, very motivated, actually, just because I'm always looking for time to work on my own projects. And, and I was really glad to have it. <laughs> still am. I'm still, <laughs> still working <laughs> on my own projects. I'm trying to move them forward in a way that will allow me to have to spend more time on my own projects as well. Excellent. Um, what I found most troubling was I, I have a, a nine uh, eight to five job as well. I work for UNM 
in marketing, graphic design and stuff like that. So um, working from home, you know, cause I also use my computer and my Cintiq and stuff to do digital illustration and posters and that sort of thing. So like they started to merge together the work day and, and you know, the after, after work art projects. And that was really tough. So I had to physically separate and put my laptop and everything set up an office in the living room and then have my regular office for art. And only then was I able to be more productive. But, but yeah, when it started to blend together, it was all very confusing and, and you're just in your house all the time. So it's like, what is work work? And what is my freelance work? And it, yeah, but yeah, but the, but the physical separation of offices is what really helped me. Right on. Wow. Yeah. Mine's kind of related to that because um, everything blended together for me too. I have two kids who are schooling at home. My dad happened to be living with us at the time. So writing was my only way to escape my family at that time. And for me, um, I was motivated because the only thing that felt like it was changing in my life was my word count. Everything else was the same day after day after day. So the word count kept me going. And I, I started a novel at, in April and I finished it in August or so. So I actually have a pandemic novel that's out on sub right now. Um, so for me, it was really productive, but then I have just gone through a stint where I haven't been as productive over the summer. So I'm just now starting to, uh, to start a new novel now. Awesome. How about you, awesome. Um, Well, um, I, I started off the pandemic by learning Photoshop. It was something that when I, when I was going to Art Institute, I had never actually learned Photoshop. I tested out of it, which was weird because I didn't know really a whole lot about it. So they were like, oh, you don't need it. I was like, great. Um, but I learned Photoshop and then I also started developing my watercolor style. So now my style has completely transitioned over to watercolor. And a lot like uh, Beth, I got a really big uh, book cover contract where I, I was redoing um, an author that was really big in the 80s, um, whose name now I can't remember. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, they, I had to do four book covers simultaneously. So that was really hard. So, um, but what John was talking about, um, a little bit of what Reese was talking about actually brings me to uh, the next question and kind of jump off of that. Um, how did you guys remain, I guess, sane, uh, positive? How, how was your mental state during the pandemic and, and, um, and how is it now? Well, I, I guess I'll jump in again. <laughs> um, sure. I think what, something John said really resonated with me because I we moved into a, a, a new house right before the pandemic. And at the same time, my husband was working um, remotely from his job in Colorado. And so he kind of took over the office space and I didn't have a spot. And I never found that spot um, in, in my house. So now we're getting ready to move and that's the first thing I'm gonna insist on is I, I need my spot. I need a place where when I go there, I'm ready to work. That signal, and I've always had that. This is the first house that I didn't have that. Um, so that was, that was really hard. And I, I don't, I'm not sure it remains sane. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the jury is still out on that one. I, um, I, I just missed, of course, it's like the perfect storm. I just missed having come from Colorado to Arizona. I miss being outside a lot of the time. And here, nine months out of the year, it's like living in hell, frankly. Um, it's always hot. Uh, you know, we, we started exercising at 4.30 in the morning to, to be able to go down. We live in Lake Havasu to be able to go down to the lake because it was the only time when, when you could really be comfortable outside. So I, um, I really missed that. So that's why I'm saying, I'm not sure that my sanity has come through this intact. And I guess it'll take when we get to a new house and I get my spot and I can start maybe being outside more to, uh, <laughs> to get it back. I wish I could say that everything stayed sane, um, but uh, I discovered that I really like to sleep, um, <laughs> um, and I could have like 
socializing in my dreams. Um, and I know that sounds very, very strange, but it became sort of, you know, this is my cherry pie at the end of the day is I get to sleep uh, and, and have dreams. Yeah. And it's really hard to shake. Um, I, it, it is a, it is a, it is a battle. Um, because now I'm, I'm used to a certain level and, and man, I have, I, I, I love my dreams. I, I have a very nice social life in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, a couple, a couple of things during the pandemic that helped that really saved me. I think my, my dog, obviously, uh, Leia, she's a pug. Uh, she's a senior, she's 15 and a half, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm just so happy that I had a whole year and a half to hang out with her this whole time, you know? She's doing great, she's sleeping right here. But, um, nice. and then it, as far as interactions, like we, we had to get kind of inventive, you know, like me, me and a friend of mine, uh, I, I've, I've known her since high school. We started like a vision board type thing, you know? So we had it at her place and my place simultaneously. And we kind of would add to it about, you know, goals we wanted to achieve that month, whether that was like art or, wellness of some kind and like checking in with each other and that accountability was really nice um and then as far as like socializing like some of my buddies on friday night every, actually every friday through the pandemic without fail since april when it started all the way until recently uh we would get on zoom and um we would just draw and hang out because we used to do we used to do that at barnes and noble sometimes we would just get together and have coffee and draw so um you know we go three four five hours and just just draw you know and then we would share our screen at the end and show what we were working on but yeah just like hanging out and just talking and you know we chat about whatever movies or art or whatever but yeah but that that helped a lot was yeah. those kind of little zoom hangouts so. very cool uh jeff what about you i think um in terms of having a space to stay sane and um I, my dad passed away in January and then, and for years I had taken care of me and my mom. Um, but the last well, year and a half, my dad had uh, moved up to Oregon in a facility there right next to my brother. And I was still, I'm still taking care of the house and we've been maintaining, I've been maintaining it same as it had always been um, just so my dad could come back and visit and recognize the place still. Mm -hmm. um, and since he passed away, I'm still going up regularly since I have the free time to do it and, and taking care of the place. But it's so much more peaceful there. It's just a lovely haven to go away where there's things that I need to deal with there, but it's not any of my regular day-to-day -day stuff that I have to, that I have that just sort of hovers around when I'm in, the, in my house. Um, and so that's, that's actually been really nice and, and a way to still, you know, uh, deal with my, my parents passing. It's been nice that way. <laughs> Yeah, and at the moment I have a table laid out and some uh, foam core on the walls, and I'm mapping out my next project with a friend. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, you have you have uh, you have our condolences for sure, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Um, Reese, how about you? Um, so my mental health is generally dependent upon two things, if I'm getting enough space from my kids and if my writing is going well. So during when the pandemic first started, I wasn't getting good space from my kids, but my writing was going really well. So, um, so my mental health did okay. And then it, it got better after the kids went back to school for a little bit and we got some more space from each other. And then and then the project finally went out on sub and then it, my mental health went down for a while because I had to think of some new ideas and put stuff together. And now it's going back up because I'm writing again. And also the kids are going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I'm up and down all the time, I guess. Okay. 
but you know but it's it's really important though too for people to hear stuff like that because there are other people who are experiencing what everybody else is experiencing too to a greater or lesser degree and i think a lot of people find inspiration to say you know instead of hearing artists who are like oh yes everything was great all the time and we're perfect and we're awesome and our mental health is always you know top notch every day 24 hours a day you know now they understand that that's not true we struggle like everyone else does so you know i think it's important um so yeah hopefully i didn't cut you off Reese. okay okay cool there up and down and i'm in a good place at the moment <laughs> right on Right on. I think uh, I think for me, and I, I can say this because because my wife is like sitting right behind me. Um, I think for us, it was at the start of the pandemic. Uh, she started working from home. She works for the state, so everybody worked from home. Um, and generally speaking, her office is you know right behind me, so um, she had to basically kind of have her own space so that we could both have our own space since we were going to be around each other all the time you know and so now she has her own office i've got the studio pretty much to myself most of the day and i think for me um probably for her too um i think that helped us out quite a bit you know we love each other we're always kind to each other but you know still having that space is really really nice because you know you can't miss someone if they're never gone you know yeah. yeah that goes back to the kids being with me all the time and i know it's detrimental to them too um, when they're when they don't get any space from each other, so that was something that really needed to be addressed yeah. by the end of last year. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, this is kind of a a light, fluffy question for everyone. Um, so, who are your biggest artistic influences right now? As in, like, you know, say within the last, like, six months or so, who have you really been grooving on? Who's been inspiring you? Um, and then by artistic, I also mean, you know, writers as well, you know. So, yeah, whoever wants to start. Uh, Palancar. Um, uh, I love his, I love his work. <laughs> um, let's see, Wyeth. Um, notice all the browns. There's a lot of brown. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to pay a little more attention to uh, mood and, and object placement in things. Um, a lot of my of the uh, cover work doesn't really have to worry about that very much. But the anything for the personal and, and for the gallery, I'm, I'm trying to pay a lot more attention. So. Very cool. Well, I've, I found since um, I, I wasn't doing a lot of writing, I've done a lot more reading and I've um, read authors I've never read before. So that's been kind of fun. That is really kind of fun. And the last book that I read and I can't, and I'm afraid I'm gonna get the, the, the the uh, writer's name wrong, but it was called Library of the Dead. And mm -hmm. I think the writer's name is Honcho, H-O-N-C-H-O, I think so. I, I was gonna I was gonna run out and try to get the book and bring it back, but I'll probably fall and break my neck and then hold it. <laughs> I won't do that. Well, we, book, we don't want that. Don't no, do that. the book is called Library of the Dead. And I just think it's one of the best things I've read in a long, long time. So, um, besides reading Charlene Harris's newest stuff, and um, I just just got um, Stephen King's new book, Billy Summers, which is not a horror story; it's, it's more of a mystery thriller. So I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that. But that's that's kind of what I've told myself. I haven't really wasted a whole lot of time because I've been reading a lot of of, of authors that I hadn't read before. So that's been kind of fun. Too, so. Very cool. I'm going to well, take I... one moment before I forget because this is because it's a great series. Um, but I can't remember the author's name, so please forgive me. But the series is City of Brass, um, Kingdom of Copper, and Empire of Gold. And I'm a very slow reader, and it's like 1,200 pages for all of them, maybe more than that. And I finished them in like three days. Wow. So. <laughs> So that's my shout out. 
if you guys will check check the chat there our oh, wonderful yeah. friends at Bubonicon has deciphered the the authors that you guys are looking for oh okay <laughs> so library of the dead is by tl huchu huchu okay I, I just, I and um and the empire of gold and etc uh that beth mentions is sa chakra Bordi. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I open the chat? Do I just click on that little? Yeah, where it chat? says, where it says chat underneath oh, okay. or right next to participants. Very good. Okay, okay. Good. Okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah. Um, who wants to go next? I am. Um, so with my new project, I really was um, wanting to do something sort of gothic, something about a necromancer. Um, so, so I'm going to name for my first um, influence is Temps and Mirrors, um, Gideon the Ninth. Uh, that, that one's really cool. And I'm also really concentrating on, on voice this time. I want to do a really sort of different, lighthearted, sort of humorous, but dark humorous voice. So I am also reading um, Children of God, which is a sequel to The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. And she mm. has such a command of the English language that I just, I'm fighting to emulate that kind of voice. Or also, you know, the Miles Moore Toys Gone books. Just that sort of like witty, clever sort of writing. That's what I have set for my own challenge for this next book. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Jeff um, or John? Yeah, um, I've been trying to think of uh, who in terms of artists. Um, and I think I've been doing a lot of pencil work lately. Um, and my brother is always an inspiration, a great inspiration for the pencil work that he does. Um, but I think also uh, probably like Michael Zuli, someone in that realm, um, where he does beautiful pencil work and also watercolor and, and that kind of thing has been a lot of what I've been looking at. Um, and, and I've also been uh, doing a lot of writing, working on scripts for comics and, and, wow. just, and just writing. Um, and I have a, a friend who just uh, got her, her first book of poetry published. Um, nice. Nicole Morning, and she's uh, not necessarily subject wise and an inspiration so much because she does a lot of um, well, but her but her writing is just so strong <laughs> as a writer and her language and that is really inspiring. Very cool. How about and you, also, John? And also oh. Bram, who is Bram Meehan from Seven Thousand BC, who's working with me on my next project. Nice. Bram's awesome. Oh, for me, uh, well, the project I'm working on currently uh, is actually for Bubonicon, for a Bubonicon Presents uh, movie at the Guild. So for that particular poster, I'm looking at like art by, I guess, Bernie Wrightson, you know, lots of depth and detail, blackout shadow, that sort of thing. Um, and um, concept artist William Stout, I've been looking at a lot of that for like creature stuff. So um, so that's currently what, what, what I'm working on. I would say. As we awesome. speak, actually, I took a break to do the panel and then I got to get back to work after. So. <laughs> awesome. So how about yeah. you, Jazz? I've been, uh, I've been reading a lot of Neil Gaiman uh, um, just because it's Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've been also looking at a lot of, uh, we, uh, both my wife and I went back to start reading or rereading the Sandman graphic novels which are fantastic. If you've not read them, um, you should. Um, but uh, Charles uh, Vess, V-E-S-S, -S, um, was a fairly prominent uh, artist on a lot of Neil Gaiman's books, not just for Sandman, but for a lot of other projects as well. Um, and he has a very Art Nouveau, old world fantasy type of vibe that I've, you know, that just really inspires me. Um, 
you know, anytime I want inspiration, I always end up going backwards instead of forwards. So looking at his stuff really reminds me a lot of the old Art Nouveau artists. Um, same thing with uh, P. Craig Russell, um, who has also done a lot of stuff for Neil Gaiman, uh, a lot of stuff for Marvel Comics, etc. A lot of the a very similar kind of vibe. So those have been like two pretty big inspirations for me recently um i have a long list if you want like the whole history of everything that inspires me but um <laughs> okay so that was a light-hearted question now um, i want to get to kind of a, a a fairly deep question um which has kind of come up several times for me over the last year um, do you guys feel and this is just your opinion you know obviously bubonic Khan is not sanctioning anyone's opinion or anything like that this is just you guys's opinion but do you feel that it's important for an artist's work to comment on current social or political issues and there are no wrong answers so you know i i um i try to stay away from that as much as possible because it, it's the country is already so divided, you know, and and people's opinions about everything are so um, cemented that I I prefer not to. But that's me personally. I I don't like I don't discuss politics and I don't discuss religion and I don't discuss whether you should get vaccinated or not because I think those are very personal things, I think they should stay very personal. And um, that's just me. That's the way I feel about it. We're too, we're, we're just too divided already. I, I don't want to add to that. I don't do it well in my work. Um, mostly because I, I, I get really fired up. <laughs> um, but uh, and for those of you that have, have, have listened to me before, I'm about to shout out to my favorite artist, I mean, author. Uh, Claire North just put out a book called uh, The Notes from the Burning Age. And she handled all of this in that book beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd rather have other people that have better language skills than I to, to do the shout out. Although, um, yeah, I, I I can't put it in my work because um, I get I get really ticked off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> agreed. Uh, I, I'm the same. I, I try to, um, you know, on social media every now and then I'll I'll lose it and and say something. But for the most part, I you know I try to keep it civil. But um, in the work I do, I really can't put it in there because it's. It's more of pop culture. It's IPs that are already established, interpretations of a, of, a, of a thing and that sort of thing. And but where I work at the university, like we definitely pay attention to that. And we, you know, you have to be careful what you say. We're in marketing, so you know we have there's all kinds of controversies and whatnot. So so definitely, um, I would say my work life, you know, really watch what you say. And my art life, it doesn't really fit. And but in my personal life, yes, I am very vocal and sometimes on social a little too much, but I can't help it, so. I hear you. I think that, that in general, um, one of the ways we can heal to, as a nation is to just converse more. Um, and, and, and in a non-combative way. That's, that's, the, that's the tricky that's part. The <laughs> 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 yes <laughs> you, you have you have discovered the problem expertly <laughs> when i when i deal with it in my work in my, in, in my comics and that kind of thing i i tend to deal with it sort of indirectly like for the most part you know i i may you know if i uh the project I'm working on now involves climate change, and but it's just there, and, yeah. And there are people with different attitudes about it in the story. Yeah. 
that have that are not at all related to the kinds of things that are commonly <laughs> in in the, in the in society. Okay. They're much more, much more personal for each of the characters. So, Got it. That's, that's kind of where I come from. Okay. How about you, Reese? You know, I'm kind of of the attitude that um, what we're calling politics is a lot of the time it's human lives now and human lives are in the balance um, for almost all of the issues that people are calling politics nowadays. And I, I personally think it is important to give our voice to the issues that we feel strongly about because otherwise, you know, the marginalized people are gonna start to feel more alone. We need to be there to be part of this conversation. And that that is my opinion. And of course I'm coming from, I'm, I'm a transgender, I'm non-binary. So I am part of this conversation whether I want to or not, but I do wanna be part of it because I think it's, it's very important to put our voices out there into the world and to support each other and to feel supported in return. So I am not quiet about my opinions. I'd rather just be myself than Feel like I'm hiding half of myself every time I try to talk about my art or my life or anything. Oh, that's that's really important. Um, yeah, I man, I go back and forth about it quite a bit. When when uh, when the whole Black Lives Matter movement started up, um, it was really kind of impossible for me to not say something. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, I try not to get involved with, you know, who did I vote for or how I feel about this issue or that issue. But being, you know, being a person of color, you know, I can't just say, oh, that Black Lives Matter thing. Oh, I'm sure that's overblown. I don't, you know, obviously not. It's, <laughs> I don't have that kind of luxury. Um, so, but I think the people that follow me, my fans and things like that, you know, I, I don't think that if I happen to say something about a particular subject like that, that they would be shocked and surprised. It's like, oh, no, the black guy, you know, he's an artist and normally he's a nice guy. But then you start talking about Black Lives Matter. It's like, well, yeah, he's black. So I kind of get a bit of a pass in that regard. But I also try to stay away from too much in the way of political stuff um, that is not directly affecting me so much. Um, but again, I feel, sometimes I feel bad about that. So I, I'm with John in the sense that I kind of don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing or, or make people upset. But at the same time, I'm with Reese where it's like, but these things are really, really important. And shouldn't I use what tiny platform I have to say something? So I don't know. I'm really kind of divided. So I think I threw that question in just to kind of see, see what you guys thought so that I could kind of form my own opinion about what I should do. Um, I so I don't know, but I think it's, I, I think it's kind of tricky. We get, we get, we start getting this fear of like, what are people going to think of if I say this or if I do this? And I, I don't know. I just think we can't be afraid of that all the time. We have to, we have to be free to be ourselves as artists. That's why we got into this business because we wanted to express ourselves. We, it doesn't feel good to have to hide part of yourself to me. Well, I, of course, you don't want it all out there all the time. Of course, you do want to have a private life, but at the same time, if you're feeling like you want to speak up and you're afraid to because you're worried about what people are going to think, then that comes with its own sort of dangers to the mental health, I think. And when I, on social media, when I, like, you know, when I'm, when I'm myself, obviously I speak my mind and I have a lot of opinions, but I haven't reached the point in my art yet where like, like I said, the art I do is very pop culture and it's very, like I said, recognized IPs and we post or stuff like that. Um, I still have yet to like create art that is just from here, all from me. And I do some traditional art that's, you know, Mexican art. Um, but again, that's just like heaped in tradition. So I still have to explore that part of me, I think. Like, you know, this inside to create something that's like truly me. Um, so hopefully one day. You know, my voice will come out of my art, but for now, my voice is just on social media, separate from my art, which is both fortunate but unfortunate. So, I'm sorry, did I did I I cut somebody off? I feel like they started talking. I heard somebody talking. I think you and Jean were actually talking at the same time. So, Jean, sorry, Jean. Uh, sorry. Oh no, it's it's yeah. it's cool. This is a discussion. So, yeah, and and um and John, I I I, I agree so much with. Um, with what you've said, and I and I and Reese, I agree with you too. And I think um, my problem is that I can be 
myself with people that I trust. But there are so many people on social media that are ready to jump on anything that you say and blow it up or misinterpret it. Um, so that's why I think I, I, don't, um, I don't advertise the way I feel about a lot of stuff on social media. People that know me and people that I, I can actually have a, a decent conversation with, I'm not afraid to voice what I, what I think. But there are just too many people, and I've been caught in this too many times, saying something that I think is um, relatively benign, and it's blown out of proportion. It's, it's taken out of context, and it's blown out of proportion, and it does not reflect the way I feel. So I guess I've been um, burned enough times that I'm, I'm just very wary of, of putting anything out there unless I, I'm talking and discussing with people that I trust. So that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. <laughs> but I do think it's important. I think it's important to be able to, 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 to be yourself and to be honest. I just wish that um, we weren't living in such an argumentative culture, you know, that, that, that people don't want to really listen and think about anybody else's opinion except their own. Yeah. It's, it's hard too. Cause I think, I think we've, we are, we are in a different place than we were maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, and I think, back then in the before times <laughs> um we could we could have discussions with people who had different opinions than us and we could talk about it and we could say hey so here's how i feel how do you feel and if they have a different opinion we could kind of go oh i never really looked at it that way before or i don't know that i agree with you but i see where you're coming from or whatever you know now it feels like we have one group of people and I'll, I'll let the audience decide which group is which, but we have one group of people who it seems sometimes are ready to attack. Right. And we have another group of people who are ready to be offended. Yes. Yes. And so it's very difficult to be in the middle. And so, you know, on, in some ways, maybe, it feels like we as artists, writers, et cetera, musicians, et cetera, um, maybe it's our job to kind of be that middle of the road, to be um, to be the people who hopefully maybe inspire more discussion as opposed to, you know, I don't know, as opposed to necessarily yeah, just sitting of, back and not saying anything or yeah instead you know, of being a polarizing um uh yeah you know, I don't, you know but again i don't know this is i'm i'm throwing this out because i don't really have an answer i have no idea what we should be doing as artists necessarily that's a hard question Chaz. thank you <laughs> I mean, uh, oh, yes. Yes, it is. It is a hard question. Yes. Well, it's on that, though, that, that <laughs> traditionally, I mean, uh, traditionally, the arts have been there to provoke and, and inspire discussion, but by provoking and, and living at the edges of things. And, and, it's a, and it's an interesting thing that we're, I think you're right, that we're now at a point where the arts have to be in the middle to, to create the, the kind of discussion that they were after in, in the past. I yeah. also think that the smaller discussions that aren't, you know, placed on open so social media, the small ones, the conversations, those are, have their value has been brought down because it feels more private, but I think those are more impactful. Um, you know, a, a, a conversation with, you know, 12 people may have more positive effect than having it with 150,000, you know? Mm. Um, I think that we need to pay attention to how conversations go. Um, like you were saying, I may not agree with you, but I, I, I respect your opinion. Right, right. Um, 
And if you if it is really off into left field, then you've gotten more you've gotten information, and that's helpful too. Um, <laughs> um, uh, just recently, I had um, I've been following a, a painter who does uh, live painting demos, and I love his work, but. I found we are not on the same wavelength and I gave him a pass once and I, I just, you know, I, I, you know, it was very clear. I was like, I love your work, but you and I are not on the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, I think those are important. I think those small conversations are important. Yeah. Boundaries are good. Yeah. Boundaries are good, and, and not 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 just to keep people out, but to be able to say, I think this discussion is going down a road where I know that I am not going to change your mind, or I know you're not going to change my mind, or I know it's going to become very uncomfortable for both of us. So this is where I'm going to change the subject, or I'm going to, you yeah. know, I'm going to let you do you, and I'm going to go over here and and you know do my thing. Um, but I Let's think that's that also letter. stuff that we're learning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think we're kind of learning how to how to deal with each other in new ways, I think, in some ways. And as artists, I don't know. Um yeah, I I I think I think this falls under the category of to be continued. <laughs> you know? We'll say um, when you we talked about mental health earlier, like when you mentioned boundaries, I think that is very important because you know, we have the right to curate our own lives for our own mental health, you know, and I, I will say that the last year has taught me some stuff about people I thought I knew that maybe I didn't know so well, and it's super depressing, you know, and, and how to deal with that, you know what I mean, who, how to have a conversation with the person who will actually speak with you and have a dialogue, and then there are some people, and I'll be honest, in my life that just aren't in my life anymore, because there's just that conversation cannot be had. Right. And, and I just, I have to, for my own mental health, just back away, you know? So um, I think uh, that, so I want to add that to the question from way earlier that helped me get through too, is just, and as, as harsh as it might sound, there are some people I just had to say, hey, I wish you well, but uh, yeah. we part ways here. So, and that's okay too. I think that's okay mm -hmm. to do too, for your own mental health. Yeah. For your own mental health. And I think for your own, for your own safety too, sometimes, because I know, um, and I, I don't presume to speak for, for you, Reese, but I know you being in your position, it's gotta be somewhat difficult to try to navigate that sort of thing for your own, again, for your own safety as well, because, you know, you being transgender, uh, or genderless, um, can make you a target also. Um, so for other people, especially younger people who might be watching this, um, which kind of gets me to one of my last questions for everyone, but do you have anything specifically that, a, a specific piece of advice uh, for not just artists, for, but just for people who are uh, transitioning um, or transgender, et cetera, who might find themselves to be a target of social media, et cetera, um, So this is specifically about social media, is that? Uh, it, or, or whatever. Um, well, we, let's say social media, because I think right now we're kind of dealing more with people that we don't know from social media who will comment on our lives or be cyber bullies or trolls or whatnot. So. Well, for me at this time in my life, um, social media has so far been more beneficial than harmful. Um, and maybe that's because I don't have a big enough following or whatever, but, but I usually find a lot of support on social media and I'm also able to find um, others to help me with the questions that, um, that I might still be having at this point in my transitional journey. Um, I would say that if it's, you know, if I start getting a lot more bullying and stuff that you can do stuff like turn off commenting so that only people that follow you can comment. Or of course, there's always the take a break option, which I've done not because of bullying or anything, but just because sometimes you really need a break or you're not in the greatest place and you don't want to say something that, you know, you might regret later or stuff like that. 
Um, so as far as social media goes, yeah, I don't have any suggestions outside of it's actually a really good place to find friends and family. So as far as I've found so far. Okay. Okay. Very cool. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of friends of mine, uh, one in particular who, when, who is still transitioning actually now. So, uh, he has, um, provided a lot of insight in terms of what he's been dealing with and things like that. Uh, so um, we have a 10 minute warning. I want to take maybe like five minutes uh, for you guys to answer one final question. Again, this is pretty lighthearted because we, we got really heavy there for a while, which is cool. Um, so what's one uh, piece of advice that you would give to young artists who want to be as successful as you are? Oh gosh. <laughs> Beth? <laughs> uh, um, understand that if you do something that you love, that you are going to work your took us off. Um, and you're going to do a whole lot of things that may not make your heart sing so that you can do things that make your heart sing. Oh, that's good. Um, <laughs> I, I love inventory. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love taxes. Yes, I do. No. Um, <laughs> and that has to be part of, of the discussion when you decide that, that you want to do this as a job. Um, all the things that are attached that make it so that you can make your mortgage. Yeah. Um, so it's not just I'm, I'm, I'm going with the muse. Right. Um, Make deadline. <laughs> <laughs> As of yet, the muse has failed to pay my rent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing that, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, one thing that I've noticed, and I am guilty of this as well, um, is that young artists a lot of times don't charge enough. Mm. Uh, but, um, and, and I just had to tell Natalie that, that you know, she's, she just started up an Etsy and it's like beautiful Etsy, way too low prices. <laughs> and Always at a zero. Artists <laughs> appreciate the idea that, that uh, you know, if you, if you at least start with figuring out what it takes, how many hours it takes you to do a piece, and what do you what do you deserve as an hourly wage? Yeah, you know, just getting to that point <laughs> is hard for a lot of young artists. Yeah. All right, Jean. Well, I, I think for writers, especially new writers, I think there are two things. Number one, um, just don't give up. I mean, just don't give up. I mean, and too many times people do. But the other thing that's hard for new writers to understand is that this is a business. And whereas we as writers are creating our art, the publishers are looking at the bottom line. And I think it's hard sometimes for new writers, especially to understand that this is a business. And no matter how much you love your own work, it's gonna be up to the publisher for good or ill to determine the worth of that work. So you need to understand that it is a business. And I think that's really hard for especially new writers to come to terms with. Excellent. Um, John, what have you got? Um, I would just say, keep pushing forward. I mean, I, I know it's difficult, especially in art school, you're getting critiques, you know, constructive criticism, like, I mean, um, and find a support system, a support group of artists that always helps too. You know, I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be without kind of the art friends and art or well they're, they're more like family like art family I've made throughout the years you know and, and that support system and uh you know my buddy Jeremy who I always show art with you know uh we started screen printing gig posters back in 2008 I think just this band needed a poster so we did a thing and then ever since then that journey he and I have been doing that together and it's super fun you know and, and I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it so find that community and that support system Excellent. And 
I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not saying don't, don't go at it alone. You know, obviously, you know, not everyone has a, an art partner to, to, to journey with, but I mean, I don't know. I like to be around, be around other people. Yeah. I'm not really a loner type. <laughs> so that's good advice. Reese, how about you? My number one advice is always uh, finish your book because so many art writers I know don't quite get there. Um, and when the time comes, get feedback, return the favor, um, get feedback and take it to heart, make it as good as possible and then take all the chances you can and start on the next book and finish. Nice. Excellent. Um, Chaz, Excellent. If, I, if I could say one thing real quick. Um, yeah. I just want to give a shout out to the writers on this panel because at work, like I said, I work in marketing at UNM and I'm just learning some brand writing. It's very light, very small little paragraphs and it is so hard. I don't know how y'all do it. So, you know, just all the praise. Yes. <laughs> all the praise. Right on. So I'll make this one really quick. Uh, my advice would be, um, I, I, I stole this directly from another writer, in fact, uh, from Neil Gaiman, uh, who said, basically, be really, really good at what you do um, hit your deadline and be really easy to work with. Yeah. And you really only need two of the three of those. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you can become successful at freelance. So, um, since we only have about four and a half minutes left, uh, I'm just going to go around, uh, around everyone and let them tell you where you can find their work. So we'll start with, actually, we'll start with Reese since I've been choosing Reese last every time we're going to start with Reese. Um, look, these are my two most recent things. I've my, my novel, Shrouded Loyalties, and I've got a short story in Clockwork, Curses, and Coal, which came out in March. So if you hit up my website, uh, it's just reesehogan.com. It will direct you to all the places you can buy those. Excellent. Uh, Jeff, where can they find your work? Um, I've got a website at belmondotomato.com. And... Uh, and there's also 7000bc.org where uh, uh, our, we've, uh, during the pandemic, this whole time we've been doing um, workshops online, um, essentially for free. Uh, we're now in a pay what you can <laughs> mode. Um, and we've settled into a 16 week spring and 16 week spring and fall sessions and eight up and eight weeks in the summer. So excellent that's excellent next one's starting up in end of august right on thank you john uh my main web website is uh john sanchez creative.com or you can search uh jonito j-o-n-i-t-o art and i'm on instagram uh threadless and facebook and the rest um and then physically uh jeremy and i have posters hanging up in tractor brewing and knob hill and at Wells Park on 4th Street, if you're in Albuquerque, so. <laughs> Important safety tip there. All right, uh, Beth, how about you? Uh, let's see, you can find my website at archwayportico.com. You can find my work at Keep Contemporary Gallery in Santa Fe. And uh, you can find my work at Prince of Cats Literary Productions. Um, and that's it. Excellent. Jean. Um, these two books have come out um, in, in about the last year and a half, and they're available at all the, you know, the usual suspects. And the third book in this trilogy is going to be out before the end of the year. So, Excellent. And you guys can find uh, my work at chazkemp.com. Uh, I also have an Etsy site, which will become more and more rapidly filled with new art, new watercolor art. And you can find me on Facebook and uh, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. So uh, let me end everything by just saying thank you guys so very, very much for your comments, for your opinions, for this discussion. It's been fantastic and I've really loved it. So, And we want to thank Bubanacon as well yes. for having us. And Chaz, you were a great moderator. Thank oh, well, you, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that smart. means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank all of our artists and writers for participating today in this panel. I do want to give two plugs and also some little bubonicon uh, publicity is that Chaz Kemp's 
Perry Roden for 2021 is available on t-shirts. If you go to our website, you can order that. Uh, orders are due by Tuesday, uh -huh. August 24th, 5 p.m. They are prepaid. We will ship them as soon as they're printed. And uh, you may, if you're lucky, you still be able to get a John Sanchez Aliens poster. Uh, he's doing that for the August 13th, 14th screenings at the Guild. And perhaps if you're lucky, there's still some left by the time this airs. So thank you once again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.